In this one, we're going to have a look at methods. So, so far we've seen how we can create classes, how we can create objects from those classes, and how we can then give those objects data using properties. So methods, they are functions which belong to an object and allow the object to perform tasks. The way I'll start is by clearing out all of this stuff, which we did at the end of the last recording. And then the price, I'm just going to show you something here. You don't always have to set a default value. You can actually just in, uh, create your properties like this and they'll by default have a value of null. So first things first, I might as well just demonstrate that to you. So we'll create a soap object. So soap object equals new product. And then we'll just var dump this just to demonstrate what I mean. And then to run it, I'll just make this font a little bit bigger. PHP creating classes. Okay, so not the easiest thing to read, but what we're looking for here is these bits here. So here are the properties. So we have name with a, uh, it's telling us that it's a string with four characters and the value is soap. But for the price, we have null. So if you don't actually uh, initialize it with defaults, then they'll uh, default to null. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this one is show you how to create a method. And what our method is gonna do is it's going to take the price. So the price uh, will be in cents, so, or the most atomic form that they can be in. So in, in uh, UK, it would be in pence. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we want to convert it to the currency. So if we had uh, 100 cents in order to convert that to the currency of euros or dollars, you'd simply divide it by 100. So, this is something which you want. You wouldn't want to be uh, having um, this logic floating around in your code everywhere because you might want to do this maybe a hundred times in your um, web program. So this is where methods come in handy because you can uh, create the method. You've created it once, and then any time you just want to see the price in uh, currency form, then you just call that method on the object instead of having to actually write that code hundreds of times. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, we'll say sub object. We will actually set a price. And so we'll set this to 500. So uh, in euros, that will be five euros, 500 cents. And so to create a method, we do it like this. Again, we need a visibility keyword. So I'm going to say public, and then it is the word function, and then the name that you want to give this method. I will call this price as currency. And then you have opening and closing parentheses. And then I drop onto the next line and I add opening and closing curly braces. And so this will work much the same as um, regular functions. If I wanted to pass some arguments into it, I could just do that here, but I'm not actually going to need them. I'm going to need to access the price, but I'll show you a special way that we do that with objects. So first off, let's create a variable. Price as currency. And then in order to access that price on an object instance, I say this and then the object operator and then price. And so this will refer to whichever instance uh, you are using at the time. But I'll demonstrate that more when we actually go to call this method. So here I'm gonna say this price divided by 100. So that will take our 500 here and divide it by 100 to give us 5.00. And then in order to retrieve that value, the price as currency, which we've just created, I just need to return price as currency. So now let's go and try this out. So I'm going to say price as currency to store this in a variable equals and then soap object. And then again, using the object operator exactly the same way as what we did to set the price or to access the price. I can then call the price as currency method like so. And then we'll just go and dump this out. So file dump price as currency. And just to make it read a little bit better, I'm just going to put 
a new line on the end there. So this PHP underscore EOL, this constant here, if I actually go and look at this, as you can see, all it's doing is just adding a new line. So let's run this PHP, creating classes. And so it's telling us that it's an integer with a value of five. Let's actually go and change the price to 550 just to demonstrate this a little bit better and then hopefully we should see a float value. Okay, so we get a float with a value of 5.5. 5. So 550 has been divided by 100 to give us that value. Okay, so let's have a little chat about this. So what I'll do in order to demonstrate this is I'll create a second SOAP object and we'll call it SOAP object 2. And for this one, we're going to set the price to 650. I'll call this one SOAP object 1. So now let me demonstrate how this works. When soap object one calls the price as currency method, then this refers to soap object one because that is the actual instance which is calling the method. So soap object one price value is 550. And so that is what this will evaluate to. Whereas when soap object two calls price as currency, then this will refer to soap object 2 and the price of soap object 2 is 650 and so in that case this price will evaluate to 650 so in this one we'll still see a value of 5.5 however if I change this to soap object 2 it's soap object 2 which is calling price as currency and so therefore this will refer to the object which is calling it soap object 2 and soap object 2 price is 650 this will evaluate to 650 and then it gets divided by 100 of course so let's go and have a look at this one and so then we get a value of 6.5 so just to wrap up this introduction to methods the usefulness of this is like we said towards the beginning instead of having to write this code every time we wanted to get the value as a currency then the logic has been defined once and all we need to do is just call that method on our objects so this is a lot slicker than actually having to write out this all the time and this is a fairly simplistic example we're just dividing a price by 100 but you might have uh, some functionality which is doing all kinds of processing and changing values on the object in which case you could have like 10 lines and you won't want to be re repeating those 10 lines throughout your code so if you have a method which does it for you which can be reused on any object anywhere in your code then it's a lot more slicker.